Throughout the years, many films have pulled off many death-defying stunts, getting bigger and more dangerous each year. As technology has advanced, expectations from the audience have got higher. The thrilling rush audience members receive from something truly out of this world has been desired for decades now, going all the way back to the early 20th century. The era of silent movie legends such as Charlie Chaplin and Harold Lloyd. Looking back onto one of the most iconic scenes in movie history, Lloyd climbing up a skyscraper and hanging off a clock in the classic film Safety Last. This one scene has continued to be referenced throughout time in films such as Back to the Future. This one stunt was immensely popular, mainly because no one had any idea how it was actually done at the time. Very few photographs were taken during the shooting, but here we can see a few images presenting us with the temporarily built facade which Lloyd used. It was all a matter of perspective and careful camera angles to give the effect that he literally was climbing up a building. Hardly any technology was used to assist with this scene, so it all comes down to carefully done cinematography and Lloyd having to perform his own stunt work. But it all resulted successfully of course, as Safety First is usually referred to as one of the great silent classics and continues to live on as certainly a starting point for bigger stunts to come in recent films. Another classic film to refer to is The Circus, starring none other than Charlie Chaplin. Probably the most famous actor from the silent era, Chaplin is known for performing his own stunt without any aid or assistance. We see Chaplin locked in a cage with an untamed lion, asleep but most certainly there in the flesh. CGI or even professional editing wasn't there to help pull off such a risky scene, therefore everything you see on the screen is exactly how it is shot. But as popular as these scenes may be, the modern audience want to see the stakes at the max, and with filmmakers being given more and more advanced technology, they will seize the chance to create a biggest blockbuster as possible. One director that didn't hold back was James Cameron, as spent years developing the highest grossing movie of all time, Avatar. It's kind of a pinch me moment that we're actually getting to make this movie. Jim, 13, 14 years ago, had a dream where Pandora came to him. He's the director and the writer and the inventor. This is cool. He's taking you on this journey that it's beyond words. Run! Definitely run! This is his place. Call it Planet Jim. You're not gonna believe where I am. I wrote the treatment in 95. And it had all the characters in it and creatures and settings. But at the time, it turned out that it wasn't possible to do what I wanted to do. In 1994, Cameron wrote up an 80 page treatment for Avatar, drawing inspiration, quote, every single science fiction book he had read in his childhood. In August 1996, Cameron announced that after completing Titanic, he would film Avatar, which would make use of a synthetic or computer-generated actors. The project would cost around $100 million and involve at least six actors in leading roles who, quote, who appear to be real but do not exist in the physical world. Visual Effects House Digital Domain, with whom Cameron has a partnership with, joined the project, which was supposed to begin production in mid-1997 for a 99 release. However, Cameron felt that the technology had not caught up with the story and vision that he intended to tell. He decided to concentrate on making documentaries and refining the technology for the next few years. When people ask me, you know, sort of what percentage of the actor's performance came through in the final character, I say 110%. Because you actually had an increase in the sense of whatever the emotionality of the moment was. This leap in technology meant the audience experienced a cinematic thrill like none other. And even six years after the release of Avatar, no film has been able to surpass it from a technological aspect. The way forward for films, especially blockbusters, is through computer-generated characters and worlds. However, there are some exceptions. For example, this year's Star Wars The Force Awakens has collected a mix of both computer-generated and practical effects, allowing for the film to feel more realistic. Whether this pulls off in the final product is yet to be seen, but as of so far, it's certainly looking good for the film. As time goes on, filmmakers will want to go bigger and better with their stunts, and certainly strive to get an all-dropping moment for the audiences to experience. And the only way cinematically this can be achievable is certainly with CGI at hand, but maybe practical effects still have a place in the industry.